All right. What's going on? I know. You can't answer that. In episode, I believe it's episode eight of Forbidden Authenticity Within. I'm going to be diving into the work of Dr. Joseph Sheehan, who is, I believe I am the reincarnation of him. Like, up until about six months ago, I had no idea who he was. And I built all my teachings on stuttering just through my own through my own evolution and then i read his work like six months uh six months ago and i was like holy fuck this guy like 95 percent of what he says i also think and i've and i've also said and people have disagreed with me on and i've been kicked out of face and i've been kicked out of facebook groups for and I'm abandoned places because I share these ideas about stu about stu about stuttering. And I never knew someone else thought this way. And it felt really great to see it felt really great, yeah, to see that another person um has had these thoughts. And another person who I don't know if he may be the biggest person who the person who has made the biggest impact to people who stutter um, i didn't know how i didn't know about him but now i do and i want to share eight um really big really big con really big concepts that he shares about people who stutter and the and the and the and the treatment of helping people who stutter um, from his book, his book called um, Stuttering Research and Therapy by Dr. Joseph Sheehan. So, yes, I'll be covering these eight really profound concepts that will hit you in your soul if you're a person who stutters or if you are a speech therapist. And... Also, I'll be answering three questions that I got in from guests. So I'll be answering that at the end of this video. If you have any questions that you want to ask me, then there's a link in the description of this video. You can ask me any questions, whether it be about stuttering, whether it be about sexual dysfunction, whether it be about any type of interpersonal disorder that you're facing, um, or anything really, and you want to get my opinion on it, or just share something, do that down below. I love to answer your guys' questions, and we got some fucking good ones today. So let's begin with profound idea number one. And this one needs a little bit of back talking. Maybe that's the wrong word. This one needs a little bit, I need to say talk a little bit before I share this one, because it's it was a longer thing. So, Dr. Joseph Sheehan, in his book or in or in his pa or in his or in his paper, he was sh he he was sharing that stu that stuttering is primarily a role disorder, which means you don't stutter in all roles in your life when you're in a room by yourself. You don't stutter or you barely st stutter at all when you're at when you're at when you're acting and you're in a play if you're a person who stutters and you take on that fluent person role in that play guess what you don't you don't stutter it's pretty fucking crazy hey and he gives an a he gives an example of how this is such a role disorder and i'll read you the a i'll read you the example right now he says to cite another example one stutterer 
reported that he had always spoken fluently with his landlady, whom he knew quite well in the landlady role. She was unaware that he stuttered and had no conception of the magnitude of difficulty in some situations. The the rel, the revelation came when she took a temporary position as a reg, as a registrar of voters. And he had to give his name, address, and vital stu- and vital statistics about himself to her as she occupied that new status. He reported that she was astonished and so embarrassed that it was a most difficult situation for him. After she relinquished the registrar role, he again saw her in the landlady role, and he was able to explain to her again quite fluently what had happened. There was no evident transfer of difficulty from the registrar listener role back to the landlady listener role. So what what he's showing here is this person who stutters, he spoke to this lady who had the role of landlady to him for I don't know how long, but he would never stutter with her. She never knew that he stuttered. The moment she uh, she occupied temper just temporarily a different role as the registrar of voters, he struggled and stuttered a lot while speaking to her in that new role that she occupied. The same person, different role. And then when she went back to the landlady role, he again could speak quite fluently with her. Isn't that fucking crazy? Like, it makes sense knowing what I know about stutter about stuttering, but it's still fucking, like, that's crazy, is it not? Because it really just shows how malleable, I don't know if that's the right word, how malleable or what can really change your stutter. And um, Dr. Joseph Sheehan, this is also why he says, like, you do not stutter to the person. You stutter to the role that person is temporarily uh, is temporarily occupying. And at the same time, to the role that you are, uh, the role that you are, uh, the role that you are occupying. And this all aligns perfectly with how I view stuttering as well as i say i don't know what episode it was it might have been five or four where i said why you stutter a couple a a couple a couple episodes ago i break down that to the d to to the degree in which the the perceived os the perceived awesomeness of the of the of the listener is above your self your your self esteem your self worth your self perception the higher the 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 awesomeness of the of the of the listener is com- in comparison to your self esteem the more you're going to stutter so the higher status you perceive that person in comparison to you, the more of a tendency you have to to stutter. And that's why I say the journey is about increasing your self-esteem, increasing your self-worth, while decreasing the awesomeness of the listener. Because when it's like that, guess what? You speak naturally. You don't overthink. So that's the first thing. That's the first huge concept that I just fucking love. Um, Now let's go into concept two that I want to share. He says, just as walking would be awkward if we try to direct our feet consciously, so talking becomes awkward for for, for the stutterer. 
when he has to overcome fear and an avoidance tendency and force himself to consciously speak. And not just to speak, but to speak as perfectly as possible. Under the same set, even a, even a superior speaker with no history of stuttering would tend to break down in fluency. To this, we could add the time pressure set, which the, which the stutterer has learned to internalize and impose upon himself. So what I got from this is that, of course, you're having such a hard time talking. Because if we put the same amount of con the same amount of conscious attention to how we walked to try to walk as perfectly as possible to not make any mistakes, if we put that conscious attention to the on to that to the uh, to the uh, to the automatic process, we'll fucking trip all over our feet and it goes back to uh, not goes back to but it reminds me of this analogy or this thing that i heard of um a grass a grasshopper or a spider asking the scent asking the scent asking the asking the scent asking the centipede how he's how he's how he's able to coordinate all of his 100 tentacles or feet to walk all at once and the centipede was like ah i don't know actually and he starts to think about it and now the centipede can't walk because it's a it's something you can't think about and the more you think about it and the more you put conscious effort to try to make it a conscious process to say words fluently, the more you get in your own way. So this is why so much of the process is about learning to build self-esteem, learning to build self-respect, learning to build self-trust. Because there, you don't have to think, what do I have to say to be seen as cool? What do I have to say to uh, to uh, to to avoid judgment? How do I have to sound these overthinking, fearing the stutter um, thoughts? They dissolve the moment your self esteem increases, the moment your self worth increases. And it becomes, again, this automatic process. So that's huge. All right. Let's go on to number three. Most stutterers have spent the bulk of their lives with the mistaken impression that experience in, in speaking fluently will carry over, that they can suppress their stuttering in this way. We may call this the fluency care the fluency carryover illusion in the belief that he may make his 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 occasional or artificially induced fluency extend the stutterer is constantly reinforced reinforced by prestige suggestions of all kinds not only friends neighbors and family frequently encourage belief in the fluency uh, in the fluency illusion but the history of the treatment of stuttering is shot through with it so um what he says here may be a bit different than what i plan to say you can take what you want from what i just said there or what i what what i what I think he's he's saying here is that the moments of f of fluency that you have, we trick ourselves to think that we can just always be this fluent if we suppress the stutter. So if we have these fluent if we have these fluent moments, we think we can just keep speaking fluently if we if we if we 
avoid the stutter and if we and if we and if we suppress the stutter and family members and friends and past therapies they may say they may say they may suggest this as well saying like see look how look how look how fluently you're speaking you can just can you can just can you can just can continue with this but what i want to share of, about this is a controversial belief that i've had forever since the beginning of time when i was told to read out loud to work on my fluency the dumbest shit ever because their idea is like if you pa- if you if you pattern in your brain that you can speak words fluently when you read out loud in a room by yourself and if you train yourself to say words fluently then by the time you get into a social situation you're going to be completely fluent it will carry over that shit does not work you know how many times I read out loud? For how many days? For how, for how many hours? It's not the same at all. You can speak in a room by yourself to the end of time and then go and speak in a group set in a in in a groups in a group setting at work, completely different. The the stresses in your body. The Ten, the ten, the tension in your body that arises in group sit in group situations, or when you talk to one on one to a to a to a to a person. That's what you need to learn to de to de to desensitize yourself to. Once you get comfortable with handling the tensions that come from social interactions from the judgments of other people you need to get desensitized to that and to be able to handle that without your body going into a fight or flight mode and their natural flowing speech will be produced because you're not tense but practicing in a room where there's no tension is bullshit that will not transfer over into a into a environment that has tension in it. Does not work. All right. So let's continue. The stutterer does not need to be taught how to be fluent. He is able to be fluent part of the time anyway without such teachings. Rather, he needs to be taught how to respond when fear is sa- fear is signaling. Among other things, he needs to learn how to stutter. Part of every stu- part of every stutterer's difficulty is that he doesn't know how to stutter, but he <laughs> but but he but he can learn. I laughed at that when I read that the first time. He can learn how to stutter openly and easily, something he has never experienced, rather than how to speak fluently, something he has experienced many times without permanent effect. So what he's saying here and what I love is that therapy or the journey to overcome stuttering should not be focused on learning to speak fluently because you already know how to do that you've done it so many times and most of the time you speak you do do it rather it's about learning how to stutter openly and easily without resistance because that's something you've probably never done be you've never done before but you speak you've spoken fluently before but you've never done this before and the reason why this is so mandatory the reason why this is the goal is because when you are no longer putting the goal into uh into uh into avoid the stutter or to speak fluently 
but rather you're accepting it and you're saying the goal is to start the goal is, is to stutter openly and easily guess what you're not in this constant fight with yourself you're not in this constant push pull trying to uh trying to avoid this stutter it makes you much more a much more accepting in the moment when you feel a stutter coming up you're not oh, how can i hide this you're trying to push pull with yourself trying to be fluent but you're saying okay i'm going to stutter how can i how can i how can i stutter e how can i stutter easily and that's very that's a very that's a very ex, a very accepting and power and powerful framework to work in and it really sets you free and it's something that i definitely teach as well so let's continue i believe this is the fifth the fifth point you have a choice as to how to stutter you you do not have a choice as to whether you stutter you have a choice how to how to stutter not wet not whether you stutter and when i when i read this i'm like what the fuck this is exactly what i've been talking about um so many people try to focus on re trying to focus on controlling the wet the wet the wet the whether i stutter or not but controlling that or trying to control that i'm sure as you as you have experience you're going to be constantly fucking in your head you're going to be constantly thinking about the stutter constantly fearing it and it will only make you stutter more trying to control whether you stutter or not will make you stutter more versus putting the intention of recreating how to stutter accepting okay if the stutter if it comes up or not is out of my is out of my control right now it's a byproduct of the tension in my body all right i'm just going to I'm just going to I'm just going to accept that. If I try to if I try to control that, I'm only going to cause more tension in the body which will cause more stu more st more stuttering. Okay, I'm not controlling whether I stutter or not. I'm going to put my intention of creating this a uh, ple of creating a ple of creating a pleasurable experience to stutter when it comes out and then you're not in resistance with yourself then you're aligned with yourself and you're able to stutter freely not cause this a not cause this exhaustion in the body because you're constantly forcing and stressing and you learn to reduce the shame and reduce the embarrassment because you're not trying to hide it you're not trying to hide it anymore all right huge 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 Number 6. The stutterer may become disappointed in the results of his new partial fluency due to the loss of protective functions and and set and secondary gains. You guys don't have to worry about those words right now. And secondary gains. He finds that he is not a giant in chains, but an ordinary more an ordinary mo an ordinary mortal who has many other limitations which have been obscured by his stu by his stu by his stuttering along with some of his capabilities he discovers that there are two ways to be disappointed in life one way is to not get what you wish for the other way is to get it So what he's talking about here is that many people who stutter feel like a giant in chains. They feel like this really grand person that if they just remove the chains, if they remove this 
stutter. Oh, wow, they're gonna be so fucking amazing. An example that is very fucking deep that I wanna share with a past client of mine that I've shared a few times before, and it's, wow, you're gonna love it or hate it. But it's one of the first clients that I worked with. We were doing super, super well. He was not caring if he stuttered or not. And we we're on like week six and he was also becoming very, f very fluent. Not that that was the goal, but it's just a byproduct of learning to not give such a fuck and learning to raise your self esteem. And it got to a point, I forget what exactly happened, but I remember it caused him to reflect on some obstacle he faced in his stuttering journey what why he felt like he was staying stuck at this cert at this cert at this cert at this certain point and he reflected that he has this story in his mind that like it was a conf a conflicting story one story was like if 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 i stop stuttering i'm going to be extremely great the other story is that what if i'm still a loser or the other fear not i'm not saying he was a loser he was not a loser he was a professor of psychology in a university actually he was really fucking great um and he he said what if i over i completely overcome this and i realize it's my personality that that's the reason i don't have any friends what is my personality that i don't have a girlfriend what if it's me it's not my stutter what if it's me and he realized that removing the stutter would confront this question. And confronting this question and this possible reality was a lot more painful than the stutter. Having to work on yourself, your personality, you saying you are the problem is a lot more painful than saying the stutter is the problem. The stutter is the reason why I don't have friends. So he re so he realized this, that he was at this crossroads that he stopped moving forward because internally he was terrified of this possible reality and he didn't want to face it and he was using stuttering as a blanket to keep himself safe as i am so great inside if it just wasn't for this stutter but to remove this would confront so much else and internally he didn't want to do that that was a huge fucking breakthrough that we had and um what Joe, what Joseph Sheehan says is, um, you're not this giant in change, <laughs> this giant in chains. You're not. Um, but star, but star, but stuttering makes you think that you are. And this is also why I say, if you just become fluent in one day, you're going to think of in the next two weeks, you're going to think of another reason why you're not enough. You're going to think, of, you're going to find another part about you that isn't enough that will hold you back until you deal with the root fucking issue. All right. That I've talked about lots before. So you're not a giant in chains, period. Let's continue. I believe seven. The more you run away from your stuttering, the more you will stutter. The more you are open and 
courageous, the more you will develop solid fluency. I've already talked quite a bit about this type of concept so far, but I'm gonna do it one I'm gonna do it one more time. The more you resist the stutter, the more you run from it, the more it's going to happen because the more you push against something, the more that thing pushes back against you. What you, re what you resist persists. One of the laws in this world. What you resist, what you resist persists. One of the laws, okay? So learning to not res learning to not resist it, saying, okay, let's let it fucking happen. Let's let it happen. If it comes up, it comes up. Let's learn to be open. Let's learn to keep our heart open even if we stutter. Let's learn to be the same person if we stutter or not. And just allow it to pass through us where there's no resistance. Train ourselves to have no resistance to stutter. A dead fucking weight. The dead weight is a bad uh, a bad analogy if you're just listening to this, but it would make more sense if you saw what I was doing with my hand. Um, but something where you're not resisting so that you're able to speak without that tension because that resistance is what causes that tension in the body. That's the, that's the path. That's the only path in my opinion. There is, of course, other paths, but I do not recommend them. And last and final thing that I want to emphasize from Dr. Joseph Sheehan's work. There's so many more. I, I'll probably make a part two and three to this because he's, I love him. Fucking love him. Okay, he says this is, this part is called safe, is called safety margin and tolerance for disfluency. Most stutterers keep themselves under tension by trying to speak as perfectly as possible. Over satisfy the fear or do a little more stut or a little more stuttering voluntarily than you would otherwise have to do in each sit in each situation. Then you then you do not have to strain to be as fluent as possible. When you oversat when you oversatisfy the fear and develop and acceptance of your natural disfluencies and ba and ba and bubbles, you will have you will have developed a safety margin as a healthy byproduct of as a healthy byproduct of safety margin you will become much more fluent so what he calls safety margin i call creating space all right i believe i've I called it creating space that didn't really ring a bell I'm, i might have called it something else there's a bunch of different words that i could use for this but I'm, I'm gonna use creating space. Uh, yeah, I, I that's that's what I use. Creating space is that, like, if you're in a situation and you're fearing the stutter a lot, and you're trying to be as perfect as possible, then, and this person, you're 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 fearing the judgment of this person all. You're fearing the judgment of this person a lot. You're going to be trying to avoid this stutter so, so much. And the result of that is each stutter is going to feel like a fucking gunshot to you. It's going to be, oh, fuck, ow. Each stutter is going to be this big stress because you're trying so hard not to not to stutter because of how, how much you're avoiding, because of how much you want to avoid the judgment of this person. But the, the moment, this is what Joseph Sheehan says, the moment you go into a conversation and you stutter voluntarily on purpose, more 
then how much you would actually stutter, how much you would actually stutter if you didn't try to stutter voluntarily. So you're stuttering more on purpose to oversat to oversat to oversatisfy the fear so that when you are no longer in this mode where you're voluntarily start where you're voluntary voluntarily start voluntary voluntarily stuttering and you're just back to back to yourself now you have already faced that fear to be judged you have already faced that fear to stutter to be seen as weird to be seen as a loser and the moment you face that fear and you desensitize yourself to it, you're going to have a lot more space inside. You have, cr you have created the space to, s to stutter. You have created the space internally to feel safe if you stutter because you've already done much more than how much you would actually stutter just in normal conversation. And a quick story that I've shared lots and I've shared inside of my course too, is that there was one time I was going to go see this girl that I was seeing for a couple of weeks. She invited me to her birth to her birthday party, and she told me like Chase, um, I'm also going to I'm also going to invite some of the guys that I've seen. Um, we're both in Argentina, so we both met a, a lot of people. It's our birthday party, so she's like, I'm going to invite. Everyone I knew, uh, everyone she knew, and she's like, just so you know, some guys that I've seen in the past will also be coming, and it's going to be at a restaurant, blah, blah, blah. And in my head, I'm like, you couldn't have created a more challenging environment for me. <laughs> like, this is what I thought to myself. Like, your exes will be there. Um, it's going to be loud. A loud restaurant and a loud restaurant and loud restaurant environment and a bunch of people that I do not know eating food like that is like I was like you couldn't have created a more challenging environment for me to just feel n for me to feel that for me to feel natural and speak at and speak at and speak effortlessly and but I was so up for that challenge and I know what I need and I know what I needed to do the reason why I would have had a terrible time there trying to speak is because I would be trying to control how people were perceiving me. I would I would want her at I would want her I would want her I would want her exes to see me in a certain way. To I'd want her I I, I would want her exes to treat me a certain way i want her exes to treat her a certain way and to not treat her a certain way i'd want her to treat me a certain way in front of her exes i i would want to speak a certain way so i am perceived in this like there were so many things i wanted to control that would make me feel safe if all these things were in fucking peace if all these p if all these p if all these pieces fit in the puzzle then i'd feel safe but that shit never it will never work out like that i know what i needed to do and it was to face that fear face that fear of being the face that fear of being judged face that fear of being rejected face that fear of being seen weird face that fear of being seen as that guy of how her where her where her exes would be like you're dating that guy face that fear of like being that loser and that weirdo and over satisfy that fear so by the time it got so when it got to the time to speak i've already over sat i've already i've already over sat over satisfied the fear and done so got so much more judgment that a simple stutter couldn't possibly equate to the same level of judgment that I'd get for what I just did. So it'll make more sense. What I did is when I first saw them, I, I went up to the table, I gave them a nod, hey, 
And they're like, oh, Chase, you're here. I walked 10 feet to the middle of the restaurant where all the waiters and waitresses were walking by. I dropped down into 10 slow push-ups. I got back up. I walked to the table. I was like, yo, what's up, guys? Only one person asked me what I did. The rest were just like funny. But for me, that was fucking terrifying. That was fucking terrifying to do because of how everyone at that table was going to judge me. But the moment I did it and I proved to my brain I did not die, judgment did not kill me, I can stop trying to control how everyone's perceiving me because I faced that fear and I realized I didn't die. I'm still here and people don't give a fuck. This was my most beautiful social night, at least top five of my life. I was in complete flow all night, complete flow. And it felt like everyone was just completely drawn to me because I did not give a fuck because I already felt that fear. I already, de I already, de I already desensitized myself to that fear. So I wasn't thinking, don't stutter, because I already knew I, I wouldn't die. I felt safe. I felt like I had so much space to stutter and be free. So guess what? I didn't really stutter at all. I was just free. So that's a big point there. All right. With that being said, that is the eight huge concepts that Dr. Joseph Sheehan put in his book called star called stuttering research and therapy and i hope you in i hope you enjoyed that i hope that hit home a lot with you now we'll get into the guest questions here first question comes from a guy who want to be called game buzz he is 24 years old he says does breathing have to do something with the stutter because at the time of stuttering my my breathing becomes messed up short and weird can breathing techniques help in speaking easily so good question and 95 percent of speech therapist is going to answer different than me maybe all of them except for me and dr joseph Sh and dr joseph sheehan because first of all when you're in a room by yourself how's your breathing you're going to say chase it's fine Meaning, when you are your natural self, when you do not have tension in the body, or when you have not that much tension in the body, your breathing is fine. But when there's tension in the body, your breathing also starts to get restricted and shortened and weird. And as a result, you, you stutter from that tension in the body too. But here's the thing. If you start to try to have a breathing technique, like speaking three words per breath, just like this, like it's a common speech technique, a breathing technique, um, Speaking is going to become a conscious thing for you. It's not going to be a spontaneous thing. It's not going to be a natural thing. It's going to be it's going to add to the conscious to the conscious effort it takes to speak. Every time you speak, you'll you'll have to think about your breath too now. Versus learning to desensitize yourself to that fear of judgment and increase your self-esteem, increase your self-worth, where when you're, when you're speaking, you're not completely tense and like trying to seek this, trying to seek this validation and, and, and acceptance from this person because they're, because they're, because their awesomeness is so high because the way, how much you value their judgments of you. When you, 
lower the awesomeness of the listener by getting desensitized to their judgments and increasing your self-esteem, as I teach inside of my course too, um, the breathing is not an issue. You will just speak and you don't have to think. You don't have to think more. As a general rule, if doing this thing will make you think about your speech more, not a good idea um, as a gen as a general rule but I would definitely say speech techniques is something I do not teach I have never taught as I've had so many people who are fluent come to me they're fluent because they use a speech technique like this they're completely fluent they don't stutter but they're like chase I can't be myself this shit sucks and they learn to remove that speech technique Face the face the fear of stu face the fear of stu of stuttering, and learn to be themselves because that's what we're actually after. Period. Okay, hope that helped. Let's go to Yulia. She is twenty eight years old, from New Jersey, and a nurse. She asks, "How early in dating, in your opinion?" Should a girl talk about her stutter and is it necessary to talk about it in the very early stages? So I've gotten this question a lot from guys and girls and I'm always quite not baffled, but just like I my first response is like why wouldn't you talk about it like what's the issue do you fear that if you talk about it they're gonna be like what you what you stutter it's like you're you already stutter with the person or they probably already heard you or maybe they haven't maybe they haven't picked it up but my take is, especially in dating, is that you want to be able to sh be all of you. You, you. you want the person to accept and love all of you. So, like, I don't understand why it's something that would wait. I know for me, it's not something that I forced out at all i'm like i have to tell you this like just so you know just so you know that i stutter i'm not saying like you you have to go and do it right off the bat but if it comes up to your mind it'd be like oh yeah i don't know if you have noticed yet but i stutter or when when i would tell people it's usually like if i were caught in that block or if, if i were not in the past few years i don't think i've had like a serious block in a few years but in the past, if I were to stutter or eat, like even now I, I tell my dates and it, I would usually tell them when I would start, when I would start, when I would stutter. And I, let's just say I stuttered on the words stutter right there. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a stutter. I do that sometimes like done. It's never a big deal. It's never something I have to rush out. And um, I don't I don't actually understand um, why it's a big deal for a lot of people. I mean, I do understand because people have a lot of shame with it and people want to hide it. But knowing the path we have to go down of being completely out of being completely out, being completely open with it. There's really no choice. Like you kind of have to talk about it. And um, yeah, so that's what I would say. Yulia, thank you for that question because I get it a lot. I get it a lot. And um, yeah, so just again, I would talk about it if it comes to your mind or if you stutter in the moment. Just be like, yeah, that's a stutter. I stutter sometimes. That's, that's how I would like to do it, how I do it. And let's go to the, and the final question comes from 
uh, a man named Adrian, 18 years old from Greece in culinary school. Now he sent me quite a long question or I, I wouldn't even say that it was really a question. It was more just like what's going on in his life right now. Um, and I just shortened it. But if Ad if Adrian, you're watching this right now, I just want to let you know I read it all, and I feel you, man. I short I shorten your questions so I can say it quicker here on this show. He says, "English is my first language, so I apologize for my mistakes. I discovered your channel today and watched several hours of your content." I've been dealing with stuttering since six. I'm eight. I'm 18 now, and it's becoming more challenging. As an adult, I feel judged in social situations and uh, and avoid speaking whenever possible. My social life is limited, and I rely on my parents to co to co to co to 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 communicate funny how I stutter on that word hey come to come to communicate um, speech there speech 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 there stutter on the word speech it's crazy speech therapies um, haven't worked I often feel frustrated and anxious about my inability to express myself I worry that star I worry that stuttering will impact my future jobs and especially in the cul especially in the culinary sector. Despite my dis despite my despite my pessimism, I wanted to share this with you. Thank you for your time. So there's a couple things here that jump out to me. Um first you're saying you're 18 and your speech is getting worse. I'm pretty sure. I don't know exactly, but I'm 90% sure, if not 95% sure, that I took a poll on my Instagram a couple years ago, maybe a year a, a year ago, uh, when people's speech got worse. Like when the flare when when the flare up hat when the when the flare up happened and i think like 90% of people said between ages of like 15 or 14 to about 17 or 18 in between there is when we started to really care about what other people think about us and we started to get that extra stress of trying to be perfect and trying to please people and trying to prove ourselves and trying to pretend like we're this fluent person and trying to pretend like we're this dope person it causes all this extra tension in the body. So one, I just want to normalize that the past years of your life, it, it gets worse for most people. But you're also now at an age where you can change so much like 18 it was the year that i it was like the worst year for me maybe 17 was 17 18 but 18 was the year i started to work on my stutter and i started to face that fear of being judged and shit turned around so quick so fucking quick and i almost don't want to say so quick because there's like a some pill you take no it, it was consistent putting myself in feared situations as much as possible and um i instantly started to feel better just by facing fear my stutter i still feared it i still feared the stutter but i felt good about myself that's all we're really after um the sec the sec the second thing i would want to share is that you're saying you avoid speaking as much as possible and you get your parents to speak for you. In your full question, you, you worded it like, um, you say, I always go out with my parents to do the talking for me, even though I'm an adult now. 
So if you are avoiding speaking and you're getting your parents to speak for you, there's absolutely no way you're going to improve in speaking. I forget who's, no, I don't forget who says it. I forget her name. Be, I forget her name. Um, she is somebody who worked under the guy that I just talked about. Um, doc, Dr. Joseph Sheehan. This lady, uh, S and SLP, she has her own clinic. She has her own, she has her own clinic, her own clinic and stuff. She, what she says which is maybe the thing I agree most with what she says is is sucks is sucks successful su successful suppression of your stutter is what maintains and perpetuates it successful su successful suppression of your stutter is what maintains and perpetuates it. Meaning, every time you successfully avoid the, the, the stutter, either you hide from it, you don't, you don't speak, you, you swap words, you do any of the hundred different ways, a hundred different avoidance techniques you have to hide the stutter all those things they're what grow the stutter they're what maintains and grows it maintains and per and per and perpetuates it all right every time you hide it it's growing meaning 18 year old adrian you're gonna have to face it dude you're going to have to, there's no other way. You're going to have to face it. You're going to have to face that fear. It's going to suck. There's no other way around it. It's going to suck. It's going to be maybe some of the hardest shit you've ever done in your life. It's going to be painful. It's going to be embarrassing. A lot of shame's going to come up. But that's the only way. Because if you continue to hide from it, it's going to continue to grow. This doesn't mean you, you have to face it all at once. This doesn't mean you have to, from now on, never, uh, never avoid it for the rest of your life. All this means is today, face that fear to, to stutter. So talk when you would, nor when you would, when you would normally hold back one time. Tomorrow, just push yourself outside of your com outside of your comfort zone and face that fear. Fif fif fifteen percent outside of your com outside of your outside of your comfort zone. Maybe that means talking to the restaurant, talking to the wait, talk talking to the waiter. Maybe that means saying, "I hope you have a good day" to the grocery clerk. Pushing yourself 15% outside of your comfort zone each and every day. And starting to stutter. Starting to stutter in front of people. I guarantee you, man, you're going to start feeling better. You're going to start gaining confidence. And soon, I wouldn't even say soon. I would say, and eventually... That worry you have of, will I be able to shout the orders, shout to the kitchen about what food to make and blah, blah, blah in school. That won't be a fear. That won't be a fear. But the only way that won't be a fear is if you start facing that fear. All right. You cannot continue to hide from it and to think it's just going to get better. It's going to continue to grow. The stutter is going to continue to grow. The shame is going to continue to grow. The fear is going to continue to grow with the more you hide from it. Period. Mic drop. That was episode eight of Forbidden Authentic. Bit my tongue. Forbidden Authenticity Within. 
I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next episode.